Hello and welcome to another small mini bike revival. I just picked this thing up today. The jury's still out on what the hell it is. This isn't gonna be like an LTS thing because it really doesn't seem to be messed with. This is like the most original mini bike I've ever gotten. Can't tell by the scale, but the thing is like two thirds the size of a regular Bonanza. My normal resource for finding out what things are is stumped. No one knows what this thing is. If you have any ideas, feel free to chime in. However, as of right now, this thing's a mystery. I have no idea how rare it is. I have no idea make, model, year. So we'll dive into it real quick. However, before I do that, I just wanna like give you a little backstory on it. I got it on Facebook Marketplace. I messaged the seller, I said, hey, I'm super interested. Like I'll give you full asking price because I knew if I didn't, I wasn't gonna be able to get it. For whatever reason, mini bike sales in this area are absurd. It ended up being owned by a thrift store slash antique store, which was in a town a good distance away. I'll link them below. They were super nice, super cool. And to be fair to them, they weren't asking enough in my opinion. I paid more than asking and even so, I have no regrets. The thing's awesome. In any case, we'll do a little dissection real quick to try to add up the clues and put the history together. Just going off of the clues right now, it looks like a Briggs as far as age goes. The real determining factor is this is an oil bath. Oil baths were an old thing that I used to do is for air filtration. I don't even know when they stopped doing those. I would say probably the 50s or 60s. I doubt this is a 50s bike. I don't even know if they had mini bikes the 50s. I mean, this gas tank is literally just removable and just pop it out of here, which this thing's really cool. It was chrome at one point, it's been painted. It had a fuel float, but the float itself is gone and also the dial's gone. Well, the dial's actually, you can still see E there, but in any case, I don't know if this tank is any good. I hope this thing doesn't have holes in it because this thing's so cool. These stickers are one on each side. They're for the Harley's owner's group, so that's definitely not original. Underneath there, there is a sticker though. So what I'm probably gonna do is peel that Harley one off and scrape at this to see if I can figure out what this is. I'm gonna go ahead and guess a three and a half horse, maybe a three horse Briggs. I haven't been able to find any numbers yet. I can definitely see there's spiders inside the flywheel cover, so that sucks. The engine does spin. I put some Marvel in it already, but like just to prove to you, like, it does spin, it has compression. Oh wait, there are numbers right here, I lied. We'll have to pull up this oil bath to see them all. I think it's a point ignition because there's a sketchy little wire that mounts to the head here. Normally it's a little piece of metal you touch to the spark plug, but since there's a seat here, you can't access that. So if somebody put this little switch here, we're more than likely I would convert it to electronic ignition. That way I can have a kill switch up on the handlebar because this is not great, especially when you're sitting on it. That means you have to take one hand off the handlebar to turn it off. Probably end up having to make a seat from scratch or find one that's approximately the right size and mount that. The only thing else that's not original is this pipe. It looks like the original foot post broke off and they just put this piece of pipe on it and bolted it in. The other side's also not there. So I'll have to do something about that in the future. I have no idea what we're gonna do yet. There's so much dirt everywhere. Yep, there we go. Briggs and Stratton. I don't really wanna scrape on the stick it directly, at least with the, oh, uh, that's coming up pretty well. I may switch to a plastic blade just to mitigate damaging the sticker anymore. I'm just curious to see what horsepower it is. Looks like three horsepower. That settles that. Three horsepower brakes. I wonder if this engine's not that old because it's recommending 520. I don't know, going off the information on here, most of the older mini bikes were only three or three and a half horse, so that makes sense. However, I'm thinking maybe either this cover is an original or the engine itself is an original and they just like put the old oil bath on it. These, these two things don't seem to line up time-wise. I got the stickers cleaned up. Secondly, I think I found the original paint. It seems like the top coat was light blue. Then there's a coat of yellow somewhere in there. And then below that, like the most proper looking paint underneath it is a dark blue metallic. And it seems like all the layers on top of it chip off except the blue, which would tell me that that's the base coat and also the most properly applied one. I'm gonna try to get the other layers off while maintaining the original coat and then maybe just clear it, which would be pretty cool. And then obviously redo the wheels in white. The engine would have been black and then it looks like a white and red oil bath. I'm starting to think that this engine's not original. The only reason I'm thinking that is because the chain has a tensioner in it, which would mean the engine doesn't need to move. So the engine doesn't need to slide in order to tension the chain, but why would the oil bath literally be hitting the frame if it was designed to not move? Like if you're gonna design it that way, why would you not just move it, you know, a quarter of an inch away from the frame? I'm mad about it, so I'm not gonna show it. The metal surrounding the valve stem's location is all rusted out it's all compromised, like you can press it in with your finger, which sucks, but these tires are meant to have tubes anyway. So I may try to address that later or just find another wheel that'll work. Oh, wow. That's gross. So I guess that's filter material. Maybe it's asbestos, I have no idea. You can get that shit out of there. Definitely poop everywhere. I swear to God, for how dirty this thing is, I'm probably gonna get a disease no one's seen in 40 years. Thank you for the end of the world for not making me be able to buy gloves anymore. I'm gonna take this outside and clean it up. That inspires 
no confidence whatsoever. Got a few updates for you before I do the work I'm gonna to do today. The bike, I'm pretty certain is home built. The resource I use to find information on them, I have no idea. I'm guessing it's home built, I'm thinking the 70s, and I'm thinking the engine is not original because I dated the engine and it's from 82, which I think oil baths had been phased out long before that point. Since we don't have a make or model for the bike, I'm naming it Ricketts for obvious reasons. It's disgusting and also it's like stunted. I'm not really sure how well you can see it on camera. I got it all cleaned up as much as I can at least while it's assembled. I'll do more once I start taking it apart. I think the dark blue and white would look the best, but I'm not sure how when I approach doing that, if it just comes down to sanding it more to expose the dark blue and then just repainting the wheels white because there's so little white usable on the rims anymore. You can see the colors more accurately here. So we got the yellow, the dark blue, the shitty light blue. Uh, I need to pull the chain off before I try to run it. I don't think there's a uh, master link or at least I wasn't able to find one, but I do need to take this cover off so I can cut the chain off. Being that the plug is blue and assuming that engine was put in in the 90s, that would imply that this plug hasn't been changed since the 90s. Oh, V6 charger guy's back. There we go. I see this actually says something, so let's see. Max torque. So that means nothing to me. And also this clutch isn't held in with anything besides from set screws. Looks like there's two set screws, a woodruff key, which seems to be sheared, and there's also a shim. Anyways, I'm gonna cut the chain off real quick. I think I might as well just remove the clutch while I'm at it if I can remove it. Let's see what 30 plus year old oil looks like. Thanks to whoever in the past who rounded this off, that's also fine. Like syrup. I went in and just gave up and put the drain plug back in because this oil is flowing like 90 weight. Also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a bunch of thinner, cleaner oil like Marvel and, and then run it and then let it thin out. Drain plug's back in, gonna put oil in it and then we'll just see if we can get it to run on starting fluid. I don't know which of these is on or off or if either of those even work. This is stupid. Probably no spark. Yep. I went ahead and ordered a new coil anyway, but I, I'm happy I did this after spraying a bunch of degreaser on it because the spider that was living in here was a wolf spider. Happy it's dead now. But there's a bunch of like crap caked up in here, mostly dead bugs and stuff that I need to now clean out. Also on top of that, we have wire nuts for the kill switch as well as, oops as well as wire that's just, I assume, twisted together and then electrical taped. That's all ideal. I have another three horse Briggs, so I just ordered a coil for that one. This model is an 82. The one I bought a coil for is a 93, so I'm just gonna put that coil on this one. It's just a matter of the coil being a self-contained ignition unit. There's no points required. Couple things, I got the clutch off. It's probably usable. I'm gonna clean it and then just set it aside, but I'm not gonna put it back on this engine. The main reason I'm not gonna put it back on this engine is because this crankshaft seems to be a 5.8, but instead of finding a clutch for a 5.8, they got a spacer, which is just a piece of pipe it looks like, and that stepped it up to three quarter, and then they just drilled a hole through the spacer and into the crankshaft for the set screw to set in, instead of just using the Woodruff key. This seal, I can't really tell if it's bad yet. It kind of does seem like it for how much oil was around here, but I also couldn't tell if that oil was there because of the chain. I think I'll probably still order that seal, but I'm worried if I order that seal that I have to do this case seal, and then maybe I'll get down the rabbit hole and just end up replacing a bunch of crap that's not needed. If I get the engine running first, the coil is dead. I don't know if it's the coil or the points, I don't care, it's all going away anyway. Tensure does actually move. I don't know why it wasn't earlier, but it does seem like they use like a ball or kid's toy or something and use that and cut it up and made a chain guide out of it. Because the rubber they used, one has metal embedded into it, and two is like four different colors. It kind of seems like it was a kid's toy and they just cut it up and stuck it in there. In any case, I just thought it was kind of neat that they just literally used whatever they had lying around. Well, that rapidly spiraled out of control and became an ordeal. I was initially just waiting on parts to arrive and I figured, oh, I'll just do some work while I wait. I've just had it, I'm gonna try to keep this as original as possible while also making it functional to ride. The goal right now is just clear coat it, make it look good, get it functional. In any case, I'm just gonna keep working at this. It's not really interesting. Like the tires don't wanna come off the rims. Patching up the rims is gonna be a pain in the butt. And as far as painting goes, you can use your imagination as what it takes to sand down this stuff more and then clear it. We have a long way to go before this bike can get put back together. A lot of these parts need to go back in the rust dissolver to get them ready for paint. But like, for example, these are the two halves of the front wheel. You know, obviously there's holes in them. 
But in any case, all these parts need to soak more anyway before I can do that, which takes days. So like this is the front hub. I did the same process of new bearings, just got it smooth. Like you can still see the layers underneath it. It's not meant to be perfect. It's still meant to show that it's, it's aged and it's original. It's not a brand new part. And the wheels are gonna be the same way. The tires were a nightmare to get off. I had to end up cutting the beads off, which sucked. But we do have the new tires and tubes. So pretty easy. They'll just, you know, go in there and be done at some point. Luckily, the gas tank had no pinholes in it. I cleaned it out really well. There's still a little bit of rust. I'm not gonna seal this tank. Same thing, got as much of the paint off as I could, cleared it, put a new valve on it with a on-off valve. We got a bunch of the body parts cleared, same thing. Luckily, the dark blue metallic came through pretty well and looks pretty good. There's still, you know, some of the crappy blue. I just wanted to expose as much of the dark blue as possible because it looks the best of the paint jobs that are here. And the backs just got treated with the uh, rust neutralizing paint that turns it black. So yeah, same thing. Like, I wish they had painted this dark blue as well. It would have looked nicer, but in even any case, it still looks pretty decent. And again, treated with the rust neutralizing paint. I'm just waiting on parts of the engine at this point, which is why it's still a part, but this crank seal's bad. I'm not sure if the case seal's also bad, but both of those are on order, which is fine. Clutch is on order, head gasket's on order. I do have the new coil. Unfortunately, one of the bolts was committed to making this an ordeal for me, so I had to cut the head off. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get that out yet, but we do have the new electronic ignition coil. You may ask yourself why I did all this work before hearing it run. We've got compression. We will have spark, we'll give it fuel. Like everything about this is fine. So it's just literally a matter of cosmetics and fixing the oil leak. There's no doubt in my mind that this isn't gonna run. So yeah, I'm really just trying to keep myself busy right now because I'm at the mercy of the shipping service for getting these parts that were required to put the thing back together. We're gonna go ahead and crack open the engine. I'm honestly not eager to see what's inside there because I know it's gonna bother me, but the engine does seem healthy. Like the piston doesn't move side to side. There's a very small amount of end play in the crank. Like there's no reason this thing shouldn't run besides from the weird carb thing that I probably can't get parts for if it needs to be rebuilt. But I digress. We're gonna open this up, just replace this seal and the case seal and also the head gasket just because I might as well make sure this thing will last. Uh, here's the part numbers real quick. Keep in mind, these are part numbers for my three horse 1983 engine. So they're probably a little different than yours. This is the head gasket. That's the oil seal. And that's the part number for the case seal. And this is the 0 0.015 thickness one, which is like the thickest one, which is also standard, but you can get thinner ones for some reason. I would go ahead and tell you what the socket size you need for these, but this is the only original one left. The rest of them are replacements. And this one was just a Phillips head that I took out and subsequently lost. I don't actually know where that. I'm gonna pull one of these and then try to match one from my hardware bin and see if I can replace that. I thought I ordered one. I may have to check the box again because I may have thrown it away. I think it's 7 16 but that one's 7 16 Yeah, they're all 7 16 okay. That one's not even tight and it's coated in oil. That's probably actually why it leaks. I could have probably figured that out before ordering parts. Oh, oil, oil already. Okay, there's still a lot of oil in this, I guess, even though I thought I drained it. That made a mess right away. I hope some hipster finds this bench at some point in the future and says, oh my God, it has so much character. And that's because a 30 plus year old Briggs leaked all over it. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was gonna be. This definitely missed a bunch of oil changes. I definitely didn't take the oil out of this. It's way too much to be residual. So I'm just gonna clean up the stuff real quick. There's a lot of shit in here. That sucks. I had bolts, but they're too long, so I'm gonna put them through the non-blind holes where they actually go all the way through. I don't know if that's the right use of that word. So that's all good. We can go ahead and put this guy on there. And then new seal, gonna press that in there. We'll just hit it with a hammer. I have no idea what the torque spec is for these, so I'm just gonna set them all to the same, which is like 10 foot pounds. Now I'm just gonna clean out the bore, just kidding, I need to focus. This head's been off for a little while, so like I just wiped that and then it came off. So we're gonna just put a little marble in it, rotate it a bunch, and anytime the piston drops back down, it's gonna hold the dirt on the cylinder wall, so we can just grab it off of there with a clean rag. We're just gonna keep doing that until it's clean. I don't know if that's RS. Someone's etched into the top of the piston with what looks like a Dremel. Like it's not machined, it's like they just kind of etched it on there all sketchily. No idea what that means and it doesn't matter. Maybe there was a thing back in the day, people were stealing three horse junk Briggs and you had to put your initials on it. We once again have mismatched bolts. So let me see if I have two more. Also these are too short, so. I don't have ones that are the same length, but I do have crowned head ones. So we'll put those in and it'll just look weird that it has 
two shiny bolts. Look what I just found. The other two head bolts. Well, that was stupid. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in now. As far as an update on the wheels, when it comes time to assemble it, you know, this is gonna be the rear, so the sprocket will hide some of the damage, which this one's gonna go on this side, really won't see it. I'm gonna just patch it with metal and then seam seal it. They're, we're gonna run tubes with these, so it doesn't really matter, it just can't be jagged or structurally compromised like that. I was hoping to not have to open the carb, but I figured I would take out the drain bolt just as a way to gauge whether the inside was nasty or not. And as soon as I took it out, the needle portion of this had an O-ring on it. It just fell out in pieces and it doesn't resemble rubber at all anymore. It's now more like plastic, but it just broke into little pieces. So I'm going to have to find an O-ring for this. There was some varnish on it, not a whole lot, but definitely enough to warrant opening this up, which sucks because while I was able to get a gasket for the intake manifold to head, and also intake manifold to the top of the carb is probably the same one, which I have spares of, which is good. So those two are not the issue, but it's the one that's the top of the carb to the bowl, which I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to find one of those. This thing's got a little butterfly dot, which is pretty cool. So other than these two gaskets, now it's the, the one I don't wanna deal with and hope everything's in order inside. There we go. Really not bad, actually. There's actual sediment in there. Like, I mean, for its age, it's really not bad. Thankfully a brass float, with only really a minor amount of corrosion on it. So what I'm gonna do now is just take this apart more, try to get the gasket off without damaging it. And then we can soak these parts in carb cleaner and see what comes out. I hope something. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen if I put it in carb cleaner, but we're gonna do it anyway and just see what happens. The carb cleaner did a pretty good job. The only thing I'm worried about now is I didn't realize there's a little cloth seal that separates the actual intake from the bowl. Like it seems to be fine. I can I didn't realize it was removable until just now. But the I guess it's an emulsion tube, but that doesn't come out either. So can't really do anything about that. And this gasket does seem to be reusable, which is good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it back together and just hope it works. I ended up having to make a gasket that goes from the top of the carb to the top of the intake manifold. I just copied the old one made a new one and then punched out some holes. So it'll be good enough for sure. And I did find an O-ring for this little, I don't even know what if this is a mixture screw or what. Everything about this is just a little weird. And then my homemade gaskets, then that, and some new hardware. Okay, that should be good enough. Engine's now done. So again, all I have to do is run this wire up to a kill switch and then back to a ground and then we would have killed the engine. I did it off camera mostly because I forgot I had spares of them on hand, but the old drain plug was all rounded off because someone used the wrong size wrench and just like rounded off the edges. So it was only a matter of time until it was so rounded that you couldn't get it out at all. To avoid all that, I put a magnetic drain plug in, which is still a direct replacement, but it has a magnet in it to hopefully pick up any metal material floating around in the oil. So if you want the part number for that, it's that there. And honestly, I don't remember how much these cost, but I'm sure it was only a couple dollars, which is why I bought a bunch of them. The last big pain is the wheels, or rather fixing the two wheels. And I'm still learning when it comes to this kind of thing. So it's a frustrating and time consuming process, but once these are patched, that'll literally be the last of the big stuff done. So that's what the wheels are gonna look like when they're done. So just new hardware, deliberately not a good paint job, but new hardware, new bearings, new tire, new tube, but it should still match the rest of the bike. I still need to make a seat, which is pretty easy. But then the rest of it is all just trivial stuff. I'll do a quick little segment on how to make a seat, and then from there, literally assembly and riding it. So I have no reason to believe this thing won't run. The carb is the only variable, and that's because I don't understand that carb at all. So I'm, there may be a little passage somewhere that's still blocked that I don't know about. I went ahead and started making the seat. So what it is, I made two cardboard templates of designs I thought would look okay. This one fits the frame a little bit better, so that's the one I went with. So what I did was I just traced this cardboard template onto plywood, cut it out with a jigsaw, marked the holes on the frame for where the bolts go, pushed in some T-nuts, and then all we're gonna have to do now is cut foam to fit this, pick a material to put onto it, coat the wood with paint, and then we can you know, upholster it and then put it on the bike. I haven't really decided on material yet. More than likely it's gonna be this fake black leather, but I do have fake gray leather. And I also have Alcantara, which I like, but it doesn't fit the period that this bike is. So I'm just gonna do this off camera. It's pretty straightforward. I don't really know if it requires any extra explanation. 
But if you do have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll let you know. Finally ready to reassemble. The bike's been cleared. I treated any bare metal that had rusted with rust neutralizer. Then areas that were bare metal, like the handle here where the throttle sits. I just put the blue on it just to protect it. You're not gonna see this anyway, but I just didn't want it rusting. The left-hand side rusted a lot. That got treated with the rust paint and then the blue on top of that. This one was just the blue. The footrest is replaced. With that, I just did flat black with the dark blue metallic on top of it. It looks pretty close. It looks nicer than the rest of the bike, obviously, because there's no patina. It doesn't stand out super badly. With the whole kill switch setup, we're gonna use part of the old wiring, part of my new wiring. So what I'll do is I'll just pick which of these will, the red one will go to, and then the other one of these two will go to a ground, probably on the engine somewhere. Like I'm gonna use one of the head bolts. I have no idea yet. So all you have to do is find out which of the two wires on the switch will get me the results I want where when you press the switch in, it kills spark. So this wire comes from the coil. All you have to do to kill spark is ground it to something. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just strip all three of these wires down a little bit, connect them up, put the cover back on, and then see what gets us the right result as far as the coil wire going to green or coil wire going to black, because I have no idea how the switch is wired. But in any case, once I have it figured out, I'm gonna cut these to the length I need, and then I'm gonna put a uh, cloth sheathing on them, and then some heat shrink and stuff to protect them. Yes, okay, we have spark. So now we'll touch this one to a ground. Okay, so we'll hold the kill switch. We still have spark. Still got spark. Still have spark. That's not supposed to happen. Let's put this wire down here. There we go. Okay, no spark. Perfect. Doesn't matter which of these wires I use. That's good. Zip tie there ish. Seats made. Not super happy with it because I have to fold it. I have no idea how sewing machines work, so I, I can't find a better way to do this other than folding, which that doesn't look good. In any case, it's done. Everything's where it needs to be as far as the T nuts and everything's coated and all that, so it'll bolt right on. That's not a big deal. I'm still up fixing the wheels, so I've got the cancerous portions cut out, cleaned up the areas where the new metal is going to go in, and then the plan right now is I have really roughly made patches that are going to drop in there. But what I'm going to do is any places there's little pinholes is going to get seam sealed as well as once the patch panels are in it, I'm going to seam seal around them. That way this doesn't happen again because what it seems like was the wheel was assembled, these were the lower portions, and it, they rotted out just because water was either sitting in the tire or just sitting in the, the dish here. Either way, we're gonna try to mitigate that from happening again, even though this took 40 years to do that. Just learning as I do it, so don't make fun of me because I have like zero experience and also very minimal tools to do some metal forming stuff. So it's not gonna look pretty, but thankfully these are gonna be the rears. I've got the pieces trimmed down as much as I think is necessary. We're just gonna butt weld them. I just needed to get them close enough that they would sit flush against the other surfaces and then I can just fill it in with weld. The only weird bit is the lip, which I don't have like an English wheel or anything that can make really small curves. So I had to actually just cut and fold it, which just doesn't look great. But what I did is I, that is overlapped a little bit. So the plan right now is to tack in the flat portions and get it all nice and in place. And then from there, finish up this rounded edge because I can't have this material overlapping. Otherwise the two halves of the rims won't seat fully. So I do have to actually like get them fairly flush with the rest of the material. So really not too bad, I don't think. Like I said, I've never done this before, so this is all guesswork. Okay. 
I mean, really not actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. I obviously have to finish up the welding and, and finish up this lip, but got the rear wheel done. Patches don't look all that great, but they're functional. I just didn't feel like grinding it down even more because, yeah, I just, the execution's not great. But in any case, this is the better looking side, which is the side you see. The worst looking ones underneath the sprocket here, so you'll never see it, which is perfect. And then obviously new tube, new tire. I'm gonna throw it in here. A little anti-seize to help out whoever takes this apart in the future. Perfect. And then when that's tensioned, it's gonna do basically nothing. Great. Ideal. Okay, well that's a total pain. There's like four more bolts I have to put in and whoever made this made it so that it doesn't really fit nicely. I've got it all mostly back together at this point, but I don't know how I didn't notice this, but when you engage the brake, it it doesn't contact the wheel at all. I don't know what happened here, but right now we don't have brakes, but that's also fine because it's only three horsepower, so it's whatever. Seat time. Done. That didn't go to plan in any sense of the word. This has been delayed like well over a month. This should have been done a long time ago. And at this point, I'm ready to just give up on it. I can't find any information about the carb, so I can't tune it, nor can I find the one gasket I didn't replace, which is now leaking. Can't really fix the fuel leaking. I can't get it to run. And even if it did run, I can't ride it because literally my knees hit the handlebars. The only way to ride it at my size is to not have knees. Like there's no way for me to ride it. It's literally sized for a fetus. So with all that being said, I wish I could keep it. I wish it was a little bit larger. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I'm happy with the end result. It was still good practice for doing restoration stuff. I'm, again, I'm happy with how it turned out, but I just wish it was actually still functional. Sorry for not posting it forever. This is literally why, because I put all my eggs in one basket and it didn't work out well. So, with all that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Come here. The, the internet likes you. Come here. Okay. Oh, she hates it. Stop focusing over there. Nothing is mm, over here, bitch. So yeah, pretty simple, simple, pretty simple stuff. I have a V6 charger with an exhaust system. Uh, no taste. Well, I'll deal with that later. Trust you. Make it noise while I'm working. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm probably just pulling information out of my ass.